with Daniel Haigadju and Imam Tohidi. Uh, we're going to be talking about Islam and modernity and to see if they're compatible or not. Um, and this is going to be a very friendly discussion. Uh, there's obviously going to be some disagreements, but we're going to try and keep it as friendly and civil as possible. Uh, before we start, can you guys maybe tell us a little bit about yourself, Imam Tawhidi? Uh, my name is Imam Tawhidi. I am the Imam of the Islamic Association of South Australia. Um, Daniel, you want to? Sure. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Salatu salamu Rasulullah. My name is Daniel Hayraju. Um, I have been researching and writing on Islam for uh, many years, over a decade now. I did my undergraduate degree at Harvard, studied physics and philosophy. And I wanted to be able, as a Muslim, to address many of the intellectual challenges against Islam, confronting Muslims. And so I dedicated... Um, my career to doing this, I write on social media. I have a website, muslimskeptic.com, uh, where a lot of my writing is compiled. Uh, you can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube. Okay, so that's muslimskeptic.com. Yes. All right. All right, thank you. So we're going to talk about uh, Islam and modernity. This is such a big topic, it's challenging to know even uh, where to start. Uh, but the main idea is to see if Islam has any place in the modern world. Um, is it compatible? Is it not compatible? And what are the reasons behind it? Um, do you, we, could, we could look at it from a historical perspective and theological perspective. I think um, maybe before we get into the details, maybe you, you, you both of you want to give a really like headline summary, like a short summary uh, what, what your positions are on this, and then we could, that will give us an opportunity to dive into some of the details of um, the points that you brought up. What do you think? That sounds good. Start. All right. Do you want Do you want to start? Okay. Uh, sure. I mean, my position is that um, Islam is not compatible with modernity, um, but I think that this is a good thing because I feel that modernity is a very destructive force that has caused all kinds of uh, pain, suffering, loss of life uh, in history up until the present day. So I find modernity to be a collection of ideas and ideologies, institutions and practices that have really caused uh, all kinds of pain and suffering and death um, up until the present day and we're still experiencing that. So I think it's a good thing that Islam does not conform with modernity Islam poses solutions and poses a form of life, a way of life that is uh, beneficial to human beings, to all of humanity, not just Muslims, and provides a way of life where humans can flourish and be actualized and be uh, you know, fulfilled in their relationship with God, with the relationship with the universe, the relationship with human nature itself, and the relationship with other human beings, Muslims and non-Muslims. So you see Islam as a cure to modernity? Yes. Okay. And modernity is the disease. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Um, well, in my opinion, obviously I respect his, his view. I agree with uh, modernity influencing religion to a certain perspective, to a certain extent. I don't believe that modernity is the, the solution to all of our issues simply because the definition of modernity is very different in the Middle East uh, than it is in New York City. For example, when you say, when you say modernity in these uh, very developed countries or institutions, the number one thought that comes to mind is that we're dealing with the advancement of the human being, uh, the advancement of education, the enhancement of our curriculums. Um, it's basically human development and moving towards a better tomorrow, um, the advancement of society. That's basically what comes to mind. In the Middle East, when you say modernity, firstly, they've never seen it. So because they've never seen it, and sorry, when I say Middle East, I'm talking about Islamic governments because mm. it's Islam and modernity. Because modernity works very well in Dubai, works very well in Abu Dhabi. So the modern 
non-Muslims love living and working there and find no problem because in a way that society with some restrictions is very similar to the Western world because those are not Islamic governments. But under an Islamic government, when you say modernity, the society, the way they look at it is that, what is modernity? Is it having a haircut like that uh, soccer player, football player? Uh, or is it modern uh, furniture? What exactly is modernity? They don't have a label for it. So for us to uh, approach the Muslim mentality with this word modernity, you're going to have to define it exactly what modernity are you speaking about? And then from there we can move on. I personally do believe that Islam, whether it likes it or not, is going to evolve because Islam is carried out by the people, not by the book. Islam moves by the people, not by the book. Most Muslims don't even know what's in the Quran. They don't even read it. Uh, so it's by the if the people become less religious, uh, less tied to their fundamental teachings, and if the people are actually uh, living in a society that imposes a, a, an open lifestyle, uh, a free uh, line of thinking for them, then Islam will eventually become a more modern, uh, uh, let's say, belief system in the West. And we see that. Many Muslims such as myself who lived and then... So, so would you say that moving away from the text and ignoring it more and... Um, would that be a sign of progress? Would that, isn't that, wouldn't that be a good thing based on what you're saying? Like Depends what text. Depends what text. So if you Quran. take a look at you know, the Quran, look, when, you, when, you, when we say Quran, the Quran didn't bring anything new for us to move away from it. It's an Abrahamic religion. All religions basically have the similar teaching. There's God and you have your duties towards that God. And then there are a set of jurisprudential rulings. Moving away from that, to another religion is basically the same thing. But the, the argument is whether you're gonna take that literally or not. Why I say this is because Muslims don't have an option. We have to be very realistic. Muslims, if they want to be religious, don't have an option of moving away from the Quran. Even if they want to be singers or whatever. You can't move away from the Quran. You can? You cannot. Okay. They, of course they can legally, no one can stop them. But you can't be a Muslim that's move away from the Quran. You can't. But you can be a Muslim and not believe in Khomeini. You can be a Muslim and reject the Hadith. Right, but the Quran itself, isn't it? Um, like, okay, so when it comes to modernity, I think if the moderni uh, by modernity we mean leaving, putting aside ancient text and take um, ancient myth and finding better ways as, we, as time goes on to live our lives and ignoring these texts, more and more, if that's what we mean by modernity, finding more modern ways, mo uh, methods that have been proven to work, methods that are more accordant, uh, according to science and are a better understanding of the universe and our nature and our psychology, to me that's progress. And if that's been mod uh, modernity, and when you say when you say that Muslims cannot say no to Quran, and that's not part of the reform, uh, to me that seems like a hook that is always going to hold them definitely. back. Definitely, definitely, and. I know this is just an introduction into all of this, but I just want to comment on what my brother Daniel said. Uh, brother Daniel said that a modernity has led to many deaths. So has Islam. So has Islam led to many, many deaths. The only difference is that the institutions in modernity are made by human beings. And the, the Muslim institution, they, according to that belief, made by God. But there is no evidence whatsoever well, that God I should qualify. That. I should qualify what I mean by modernity because... If, if you say, for example, that we need to be modern Muslims, and I say, no, modernity is something bad, well, clearly, we are both living in the modern world. We got here through to New York City using an airplane. We're being recorded using video cameras. We have smartphones. We, you know, if we need healthcare, we go to the hospital and take advantage of those kinds of things. So what do I mean by modernity? Because clearly, I don't mean that every aspect of what we have in the contemporary age is something that's negative. I think what we have to understand is that um, what characterizes modernity is an atomization of humanity and the breaking down of human relationships and the relationship uh, between humanity and God, humanity and their own nature, uh, and, and all these other relationships that are cut uh, because of a pursuit of individual rights and a hedonistic pursuit of individual 
uh, pleasure and liberty and freedom and so forth. These are all terms that I think need to be investigated and need to be uh, deconstructed. And maybe we'll have a chance to do that in the course of these uh, videos. But um, those are the aspects of modernity that are extremely dangerous and they're being exported uh, through force all over the world, starting with colonialism 200, 250 years back. But to this day, we still see intervention within the Muslim world violently and violence can take many different forms. It doesn't always have to be a tank or a plane dropping bombs. Violence can uh, be infiltration through Islamic institutions. So many of the Islamic universities uh, in the Muslim world are infiltrated by uh, atheists or liberals, liberal secular Muslims who believe that um, who believe in a secular vision for Muslim society. And so they impose that. Which you're by, against. Huh? Which you're against. Yeah, I'm against that. I'm against the fact that uh, universities, Muslim universities around the world have secularized or are promoting secularism, are promoting liberal ideas under the guise of Islam. Can and so that's, that's influencing the entire Muslim world to adopt the kind of uh, social structures that are characteristic of the modern West and are, are contrary to or against the traditional structures of family, the traditional structures of community, the traditional structures of religious authority, all of those things that I, as a Muslim, hold to be so critical to human flourishing are being systematically dismantled right before our eyes. And it's been happening for uh, centuries now, two, over 200 years. And it hasn't stopped. So this is very violent. This is very impositional, imperialistic. And it's not just Muslims who have pointed this out. Uh, you have an entire field of academic study, decolonial studies, where they investigate the different ways that Western imperial powers impose on the Muslim world. And not just Muslims, because you see other uh, nations or other communities that have also been uh, dismantled, Native Americans, Aboriginal Australians, uh, Aboriginal uh, Na First Nations within uh, Canada, Chinese, traditional Hindus, all of these traditional societies have been mutilated. Uh, and it's because of certain ideas and ideologies that come from a liberal, secular worldview. Right, so um, a few things. I wish I had a notepad. Uh, but um, one is, I'm going to ask you, can you give us some specific examples of how modernity um, has managed to uh, do all those harms. Uh, but another thing is that, I mean, you can acknowledge that living in a modern society and living by different standards than people before us, obviously it's going to have its own ups and downs. And But the thing is, to me, it's very hard to believe to, that, the, that the problems with living in a modern world could be solved by Islam, right? And especially given that all the... Uh, when you're talking about family bonding and relationship between people, uh, when somebody says to me that this uh, a, a series of scripture that uh, promotes, you know, wife beating, taking slaves, uh, raping concubines, um, I, I don't. Whatever the solution is, I think going the same down uh, of progress and modernity that, that is being offered, I think that's looking into a better understanding of our mental health and scientific understanding of how society works would be basically on the same line that we're going down with is basically the solution to all of this. And if you look at, you know, how much progress, I mean, obviously we haven't figured everything out and there's a lot of problems, but if we're talking about modernity, we have to look at, in the, in the long run, if you look at the trend, um, hum, humans have come a long way. Like, we are my question that we, we, well i mean poverty is is lo less than ever violence is less than ever child mo mortality is less than ever people have much more comfortable lives uh, but mass imprisonment is something that has gone up suicide and suicide what trend are you looking up. at environmental destruction has gone up mass farming and torture of animals is a unique product of modernity and it has a lot to do with technology now, technology is not something that's valuable. Didn't say it's perfect. Right? Didn't say it's perfect. No, but these are relatively... these are a product. You can't like just be selective in no, no, I, looking I, I, at 
widespread phenomenon. These are not things that... So if you want to have a very specific definition of modernity, we can discuss that if you have to define it. But I'm, I'm talking about the modern world and things that exist and are a product of techno technologies and social structures, governmental structures that are a matter of policy. Well, I, I agree. Oh, that I'll give you a specific example. And then uh, after that, we go to LMP. Oh, sure, sure. I don't mean to monopolize no, the discussion. No, no, no. I, I think I did. But I think it's important to uh, qualify and characterize exactly what we're discussing here. I'll give you a very specific example. There was a controversy recently where it came out that the Trump administration was promoting um, uh, formula feeding for babies within the developing world and promote and pressuring the UN to push these, this kind of education to new mothers that it's best to formula feed your children, don't breastfeed, your, their children are going to actually be better off and will develop uh, in a better way and more healthy if they're given formula. Um, so this was revealed and it became a big scandal. The New York Times reported on it. And, you know, I understand that some mothers, new mothers, they physically can't breastfeed and I'm not trying to shame them. But this kind of pushing of a product, a consumerist product, as a matter of government policy, has a huge impact on the relationship between mother and child. I mean, so many studies have been done to show that breastfeeding has incredible psychological benefit, hormonal benefit, nutritional be benefit in creating strong ties between mother and child. And if you, but the, the idea is if you want to talk about progress, well, if a mother has to breastfeed her child for nine months or a year or two years, she's not going to be a part of the workforce. She's right. not going to be able to go work and be a strong, independent, modern woman. She's going to be at home taking care of her breastfeeding child. So this is something where you see a very direct conflict between the capitalist, consumerist, uh, nation state interest and the human interest and, and the traditional societal interest. Right. R right before, I, just a small comment before I uh, let you um, comment on all this. Uh, I just want I just want to respond to that is that we have basically you mentioned that this was a big scandal right so we have gone from a world where when an army invaded the city the expected thing was that all the women are going to get raped and other people are going to be enslaved people understood this as the norm and now we're living in a, wor a world where something giving uh, milk formula milk to, ch to children hold on, let me let me Sorry. formula milk to children is a big scandal, which it should be maybe be a big scandal. I haven't looked into the news, but the fact that that is now our definition of a big scandal compared to what it was historically, I think that shows how far we come. Okay. Not not that we don't have problems. Let me give you another example. But, but we, I, I we'll talk let about mom, rape and. I want to let the mom speak a little bit because uh, I'll we, just read one sentence. Sorry, okay. I apologize. How about Flint, Michigan? Like, look at the situation where people, thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, cannot get clean water. And children are getting developmental disabilities and retardation because of a water system. And years, this has not been addressed. This is something that can only occur with the given technology, with the given structures of government and power. And so it's, it's something systematic, this kind of human suffering. You want to talk about... One sentence. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, there's plenty of violence, yeah. death, and destruction in the world that we can talk right. about. Today. Okay. Modern world. Uh, no. For the first time now, I've, I've understood where Brother Daniel, I've watched a lot of your videos, but now I literally got a, a good uh, sense and, and feeling and understanding of where you come from exactly. And correct me if I'm wrong, you believe within the context of this discussion that the problem is the separation between God and the human individual. Because when you began speaking earlier, you said the link between God and the human being, there's been a distance now between the, the human and the creator. And therefore, we've led to the problems that we have today. Is that right? Do you believe so? That the problems we have today are, are as a result of our distance away from God. Is that right? I, that's one way to ca characterize it because God provides guidance. God didn't create us and say, you know, just make your own. We're not deists, right? God has provided guidance 
for every aspect of human existence and experience. True, if that is true, then why is it that our Muslim countries and the most devout uh, institutions within them who preach for God are the worst places to live in, to be part of, and to associate ourselves with them? You can blame it on the individual. You can say that's got something to do with them, not God. But you can never convince anyone who is from outside the religion to believe that these people who attribute themselves to that God based on his own book are no longer linked to him through their actions. Islam has been responsible for the butchering and murder of people, innocent people, from the time of Prophet Muhammad, from the time of the Khulafa. You, we cannot deny this. So to point no, no, the finger... I would, I would qualify and I want to discuss those details yes. with you. Why are you still a Muslim then? Well, let me finish. The details... But I, can I respond to your question? Yes. Okay. It's a fact that I'm stating, not a question. It's a mm -hmm. fact. In Muslim countries, and I don't like this... I'm, not, Islam, I'm not endorsing Islam. any countries. I'm not endorsing Caliphate. any leaders. You would endorse yes, the government I would. of the Prophet. You would yes, endorse. Yes, absolutely. And under that government... We can talk about that. We can The butchering... That. And the killing took place, and it was the perfect... Are, are you a pacifist? No. Do you Listen, not believe in any kind of... I don't believe conflict? Muhammad had a government. There was no government of Muhammad. In Medina? No, it was a lie. No government. Muhammad never had a government. You see, he... He really, really a constitution. Brother Daniel, <laughs> brother Daniel, you see, I got him, I got him. You are criticizing a system that we have today. We call it, we're calling it modern modernity but it's a system of a set of policies because you believe that the earlier ones in Islam were the best they were the worst and they were the worst the butchering and the, and the massacre and now you're worried about New York Times giving an article the Prophet sent Khalid ibn Walid to, to do what he did with the people. We have all the atrocities here. Is that the, is that the 600 Jews that were killed? Was, which uh, not only that, the generals. 200. The 200. generals, uh, 200. It doesn't make it better. No, we, so we, should, we should talk about these details. But the question I have to you is you want to point to Muslim countries being the worst and the least developed. Are, do you have the same criticism of South American countries? Yes. You, are you going to say that there's a problem with yes. Catholicism and there's a problem with... Yes. How about Eastern Europe? They're atheists. There is a problem. How about certain uh, countries yeah. within Europe, yeah. Europe itself? Yes. yes. Even yeah. Russia has experienced a lot yes. of developmental the problems. The problem is, it's not Russia, religious. Russia does not speak on behalf of God. But Mecca and Medina do. That's the problem. My point is that if you find all of these other countries in the global south and elsewhere that are suffering from pro poverty and uh, developmental problems, as you put it, it's not just Islam because not all of these countries are Muslim. There are bigger factors that cause this kind of imbalance in power and wealth and resources. Beautiful. And Excellent. But you said it's that... It's very reductive to say, oh, these countries are Muslim, th therefore they're retrograde. You're going back again. You said that Islam provides guidance. Going back to the brother's argument that Islam provides a set of, of laws, uh, you know, for human guidance. And that in the Muslim world, they are completely... It's the worst place to live in. The worst place to live in for Muslims. Right, yeah, but he said they're not living according to Islam. No. Like, just because they're Muslim countries, no, 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 they're no, governed no, no. by Islam. The, the brother said, Islam, Islamic guidance, doesn't apply to a specific area, does not mean it can always be successful. And Immediately. Then he, and, yeah, and then he went on to say that the Prophet Muhammad was not successful during a certain period of his time. The Prophet Muhammad was never successful. Until his deathbed, he was never successful. Because he couldn't even get them to bring him a paper and pen. They said, you're talking nonsense. When he said how twenty, you know, but he uh, went from a goat herder to ruling over all of Arabia. That's, that's he never sex. ruled over Arabia. That is a big lie. Well, I mean, half of Arabia. Well, not even half of Arabia. No, I disagree. I think that we have there are certain historical facts. Uh, Imam Tawhidi can dispute them, but I think he was very successful and he um, had brought all of Arabia, the Arabian Peninsula, under Muslim control, where where before it was entirely different religion. So this was a major success. I think that 
you have to consider okay the the realities of politics and violence and conflict there can be to say that islam is from god and that islam is guidance doesn't mean that it is always going to be dominant and politically successful and this is addressed in the quran right this is you have many communities that were oppressed and were killed on the basis of their faith and they did not experience tawfiq or or success within this life uh, but their tawfiq came in the afterlife, in the akhirah. Afterlife so that's doesn't something exist. That's, that's, assumed, that's uh, something that's assumed within the Qur'an. It's assumed within in, the Islamic In, in such a discussion, afterlife doesn't exist. We don't know what's going to happen in the afterlife. Wait, 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 we're Muslims, so we can't assume no. that. Why should we take the atheist assumption that there's no. no afterlife? Have you been there? No, I have not. Then you there. don't know what it's like. I have been in the afterlife prior to my birth. Come on, brother. You're, you're giving and me so a, have you, a, and so have you, and so have, yeah, yeah, yeah. So have all of us. Look, he's telling you there are three birds. Okay, but, 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 why, why, why are we, why are we uh, handicapping our own theology? Well, we're, not, we... we're not handicapping. We're talking about current issues. You're telling me we will find the solution when we die. But, we'll okay, find... but, no, no, that's not what I'm saying at all. The hereafter. But as a, I'm just the, critiquing the, your argument that the influence? Muslim world is following Islam and they're not successful. So that indicates a problem with Islam. I think that's but, very okay, the, the, simplistic and reductive no, argument. No, hold on. One second. Okay. You said Muhammad was very successful. The Prophet was very successful. Uh, and by the way, many people will say, why don't you send peace and blessings on the Prophet? Because I'm not in an Islamic show. Uh, I would do it if we were in a mosque. Uh, people can can uh, repeat it after they hear me say it. You're talking about the Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah, and I've said that in my book as well. You know, it's, it's not an Islamic book either. Uh, but going back to my point, when we're speaking about the Prophet being successful in Arabia, can you show me how he was successful? We have to. Do you mean political success? Politically, socially, how how no. was the, how was society made better? Show they, me. Society left a state of, in many ways, theologically, they left worshiping you know uh, rocks and worshiping trees to worshiping the one God, their Creator. Tawheed, your name is Tawhidi, right? Mm -hmm. So you're Imam Tawhidi. Tawhid is a huge success. Spiritually, this is a big success. Politically, like I mentioned, all of the Arabian Peninsula became Muslim. This is a huge political success. Socially, family bonds and connections, communal bonds uh, were strengthened. Asabiya, tribalism in the sense that, oh, you're from another tribe. I hate you. I'm going to fight you. This was liquidated and dissolved because everyone had become Muslim or and were in a Muslim political and social order. It's success after success after success. So there's no doubt in my mind that and the minds of Muslims generally that uh, the career of the Prophet in term in spiritual terms, social, political, material terms were was uh, a resounding success. Okay. The way you put it out as though the Prophet came with his fathers in law. Uh, you know, Abu Bakr, Amman, Uthman, and they came and they said, hey, we have this idea. And the whole of Arabia just embraced it. It's not like anyone was forced into it by the sword. It's not like anyone was butchered and murdered and killed. It's not like, uh, yeah, look, do not make it seem as though Mecca was this uh, garbage pile of a city. And these group of, of Arabians came and fixed it. Can Mecca I? was a very important place in the entire geographic region. The Quran says, was safe. It was a very important economic, uh, we call it the, like a, a capital city, a very important place. Poets, politicians, uh, world leaders would come. It was a very important place. It's impossible that come on, uh, someone comes and says, you know, they were uh, all backward. And we came and we fixed it. And how did you fix it? So, uh, it's, uh, it's, to a lot of people, this would, might seem very surprising coming from an imam, uh, both Muslims and non-Muslims. Uh, are you? Do you not approve of Muhammad's way? Do you not? Do you not? Do you think he made mis like what he no. did was wrong? Look, when it comes to Islam, viewers need to understand this. When it comes to Islam, there are many schools of thought, and each of us view Muhammad differently. So the, the brother here would not believe that Muhammad was infallible completely. No, I do believe. Completely infallible. A sinless masoom. Com he would not make error at all. 
when it comes to non-religious matters, uh, it's possible that he could have made a judgment error, and he like acknowledges the far- like that. Like the farming advice that he gave. Yeah, farming advice. No, no. And, and he acknowledges that on, there's a Sahih say. Hadith uh, uh, narration on this, where he says that on matters that pertain to your matters, like your worldly matters, like farming, um, I'm not ne- going to be faultless, or I'm not going to. I'm very surprised. Because you're this a Sunni is, Muslim, yeah. Sunnis don't believe in Asma, don't believe in the infallibility of the Prophet. Yes, they do. They do? Yeah. Sunnis do? Yes. What if I showed you from here, Bob Bukhari, that Muhammad was bewitched and Satan put words in his mouth? That has nothing to do with committing sins. No. A Prophet does not commit sins. So, so that's, what, uh, that's what being Masu means. Which is worse? Committing sin or Satan putting words in your mouth? Hold on. As a prophet, mm-hmm. which is worse, you committing sin or Satan putting words in your mouth and you go preaching out to many people? Maybe that's how the butchering happened. No, this is something that you're referring to a very specific event. And the scholars have discussed this and have said that this is actually evidence that he was a prophet of God. That, that Satan put words in his that mouth. He was cor- that he corrected this. I mean, there are some scholars who dispute the veracity of that, but we, I'll concede no, that this, is, a, this is something that is... This is Sahih Bukhari. No, no, I, I'll say that this is... I'll concede that it is something that happened. Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, uh, peace be upon him, or, or uh, you know, God's mercy be upon him, has said that this is actually evidence that the Prophet, peace be upon him, was yeah. a prophet We're because he this. was corrected. Right. The, the revelation corrects this, and that shows that he wasn't just making yeah. things up. Yeah. He could have said, he could have said, he was making things up. So you're saying the prophet, no, his lying? wife says, Aisha says, is she a liar? You're talking about the satanic verses. No, not, not Salma Rushdi. I know, he, his no, book no, is satanic. in reference to yeah, this incident. Satanic. Yes. Is the wife of the prophet a liar? Oh, Bukhari, and uh, Armin, stop, stop, uh, this is, I, I already I said that it happened. Like, well, I can concede that uh, this actually took place. So, the... And Aisha قالت, Aisha said, Suhara Nabi, the Prophet was bewitched. Hatta kana You're talking about something else. Al- so so there are different al- incidents, right? Are you, talking, are you talking about the end of his life? No, no, no. During his life, marriage with Aisha. She says the Prophet was delusional. Here, read it. Your book. No, no. You're talking about the end of his life when he was, he became ill because he was poisoned. And some also have said that. No, this is during his life. Yeah, so life. being masum doesn't mean that you can't be affected by evil. Being you can masum, have someone who attacks the Prophet peace no, be upon him wrong. in battle this and is is he's wounded. No. Magic no. No, in, no, no, in no, 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 Islamic no. theology, I'm, magic is something no, I mean, that is a, is a real thing that can affect for, uh, individuals. On. So let me answer your point. You're making all these accusations You're not answering and me. You're not answering me. I am. I am you're, answering you're, you. you're going away. Trust me. You, you is, it possible, is it possible for the Prophet, peace be upon him, to be affected by magic? You said that. I said yes. Does that, yes. Does that how violate... Is he, how is he infallible? That has nothing to do with it. It has everything to do with it. No. Ma'asum, the word ma'asum is taken from asma, which means al-insan ya'asamu nafsah. The human being can form a shield between himself and error. Himself... You, Infallible means if he sees urine, he can't drink it because he's infallible. It's impossible that he drinks it. It's impossible that he eats pork. Not to that he has the, the, the option of doing it. Complete protection from God. How can, how can the Prophet uh, protect himself from uh, pork and, and wine and cannot protect himself from Satan who comes onto him and, and puts words in his mouth and then he goes and he, and he preaches it to but the people. But he corrected that. So how, how did it happen if, in the if first you want place? To say, if you want to say that in principle, I mean, this is a theological discussion. We, we've moved far beyond the question of modernity. If, it's if it's the case that the, if you believe that the Prophet, peace be upon him, could be influenced in this way and the religious teachings could be influenced this way, then why do you believe in the Quran? No. Because any of that could have been also no. affected. Don't, don't, don't pose the question as if you believe. This is what you believe. I need to middle. Sorry. No, no. But you're saying that this is something that <laughs> I need to get... is possible. Yeah, I'm holding you you're... by what you believe. So you don't right. think that the Prophet is No, masum. no. According to the Shia, he's completely infallible. He's completely infallible. Completely infallible. infallible. Okay. And this is garbage. Okay, so then the... Conquest of the Arabian Peninsula all, was all, uh, not all prophets are infallible according to Abrahamic theology. It's only the Sunnis that don't believe in the prophets infallible. And according to you, do you think Muhammad was infallible? All prophets from God so Muhammad, have to be infallible. So Muhammad was Muhammad infallible? They have to be infallible. But can you say Prophet Muhammad was infallible? All who 
every prophet says, from God has to be infallible. But can you say that statement? Prophet no, God. every prophet from God has to be infallible. But why, why is it that saying Muhammad was infallible? Because to me, I am more concerned about the characteristics of the leader in that region than his name and title. Um, so w one question I have for you, if, if the, Maha the, the reason why this might be relevant to modernity mm -hmm. is because we, the thing is that you, you're, you're saying modernity has some problems, right? And I, and I don't think anybody disagrees with it. Obviously, there's a lot of problems, right? But the cure that you're offering, which is Islam... Mm -hmm. uh, is we, it itself we, a problem? It's a, it's a, it might be even a bigger problem, right? Uh, which, which I think it is, and you disagree, but you see, you're offering it as a cure. So if you want to see Islam as the cure or not, the main place to look at is where? Muhammad and the Quran. Yeah, I don't from shy Muhammad away from Quran. talking about No, but those. you're saying that we're getting off topic. I'm saying this is how it's it's relevant to the topic. Because he's like, you're you're talking about what Asma is referring to, like being Masum is referring to and different theological distinctions in that regard and specific incidents within the Sirah. Like those are going very far into the weeds. No, they're not. Uh, but not, because with all due respect, they are not. Please don't make them seem as though they are. If we as Muslims have a problem with modernity, and you are so saying, you are that, saying that, that, that there is a set of a way of life called Islam that's completely infallible, free from error, if applied, would solve the problems of society. I'm telling you, we have a problem in that. So, so let me make it very uh, explicit in in this conversation. So are you saying that? Um, everything that the Prophet, peace be upon him, did uh, within his lifetime as a Prophet, you're saying that he's infallible. So everything that he did should be in conformity with modernity. If you are endorsing modernity and you think that the way that modern people are living, modern liberal, liberal secular people are living is correct, uh, then everything that the Prophet, peace be upon him, did was in conformity with that. Would you agree? According to what the Muslims say, yes. So, but no, because you said you deny that uh, no, Sahih Bukhari is. Can what? I give some context? No, I, I need I, to I give some context to the audience, mm -hmm. right? And this is a criticism that you also get a lot because the books, um, and you could respond to it because the books that you're referring to, these are Sahih Bukhari, which is Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslims are the most um, w widely used sources of hadith by Sunni Muslims. And, and Shia. This, most uh, Shia is mostly called four Shia. books in Shia. No, six, okay. and Shia. Okay. And Shia Muslims. They okay. use the Bukhari and it has influenced the majority of Shia mm -hmm. Tafsir. Right. Tafsir al yeah. is but probably the, the, the main uh, it has, Shia Tafsir and it's full of Bukhari. I understand full that. Of it. I understand that it has influenced Shia Islam, but not um, Shias do not um, are see it as all authentic, right? But, but Shias are irrelevant in this discussion. No, uh, but. They're 15% of Islam. I understand, but. Uh, some people might say it seems like you uh, you're only referring to main Sunni sources of authentic hadith. And but you, I began you, with criticizing Khomeini as well. No, but Khomeini, uh, so, so a lot of what, what I what I see is Shia uh, Shia when when Shia leaders want to criticize Shiism, they focus on the Vilayat Faqih part of Shiism rather than all of Shiism. What like about what? the rest of Shiism? Give me an example. Like uh, the idea that Imam Zaman, Imam Mehdi is going to come back and take over all the world and yeah. fight against non-believers, yeah. fight against yeah. me yeah. and make all, all come the Come back with a sword. I criticize that too. So, so you, you don't believe in Imam Zaman coming back? And I country? believe in a savior, but I don't believe a savior will come with a sword. So what's, what, what sources of Islam do you agree with and, and see that that's, that's part of Islam? It's very convenient. Everything okay. that conflicts with liberal modernity, no, no, he's no. going to say that this is something that is just been made up you by see, people who... This is not true. He is like denying... This is not true. Uh, Firstly, I deny... Orthodox Shia, you're denying no, no. Orthodox Sunni... There's I will no tell you what you I deny. As I a source of religion. I, deny. I deny everything that's man-made. Everything that's man-made can be challenged. So what's Islam? What's left of Islam? No, you, it's a religion. What's left? It, what's no, if, if it's a religion... Just what you think then, is right and wrong. No, if it's a religion... Based on your own... Th that's, that's not what God. I said. You're, you're putting words in my mouth. Uh, if it's a religion, then Muslims believe this came down from God. The Quran. Yes. Okay. So the Quran also has problems. So do you do you do you think uh, the Quran has the Quran problems? Quran is not a liberal secular book. It's not a liberal secular book. Do you know why? Because it's interpreted by this. No, do you interpret it this? yourself. No, I'm sure Armin can provide many uh, verses. No, no, no. Uh, no, <laughs> in, show, fact, in, fact, have, in fact, in fact, I have many discussions where I'm actually defending uh, certain parts. 
and, and my justification is that uh, the, the, the verses of, for example, uh, the butchering and killing of, of certain uh, nations that are outside of Islam, these verses uh, no longer continue because they are mutlaq, they are limited in their context. They don't apply to the end of time. Every Jew and every Christian should be butchered and killed. Prophet had a problem with these group of people and that's what the, the conflict happened. And it's history, it's part of the development of the religion. Everything else is not from God. Yeah. Especially, you said Imam Zaman, the Shia, Imam Zaman, the end of time, right? Which Shia has seen Imam Zaman? Well, we, no one has, has seen. It's seen all God. what, what man. Okay, if it's by seeing, who has seen God then? No, you see, the, the big difference is is this. Everybody believes in Imam Zaman. Nobody has seen the Savior that comes at the end of time. Nobody has seen him. But These are all God. teachings that we have. It's not in the Quran. It's all teachings that we have. But this is also just all teachings that we have. Like, do you uh, think come to from you, the same yes. source? The same people who are compiling. Sahih Bukhari, the same people who are transmitting the Qur'an, it's the same people, it's the, the same, same narrations. People. Not the same people. It is. No, it's, it, it's the same scholarly this was class. was compiled that... by the Prophet, correct? Okay, this is he here, is the by... Prophet, peace be upon him, here that he can tell us what if this copy that oh, you have okay. in your hand so, is accurate. So now you believe the Qur'an is distorted? No, no, no. I don't believe oh, hold that. Hold on, I mean, please. You I don't believe that. Okay. I believe that there has been a transmission, a tradition of teaching the Quran transmitting the recite, recitation of the Quran as well as Sahih Bukhari as well as the other authentic texts of Hadith I mean this is the Sunni intellectual wow. tradition that has so the Quran been is able perfect. to preserve yeah, of course no perfect way. of course the third time the Quran is perfect yes a goat and a sheep did not come and eat verses from the Quran the stoning verse no. no it doesn't the Quran is not pages okay the Quran is so preserved on the preserved tablet. So in, he in heaven. Oh, right. again, it doesn't exist in real life, and we have to wait for the Quran to You want to talk about? Are, yeah. are you trying to pin me on like regim? Are you no. trying to pin no. me on? No, what? I'm not trying to pin you on anything. You're you telling me this book is perfect, this. and this is the, the 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 belief of mainstream Muslims. I'm asking you: Did a sheep and a goat not eat verses of the Quran? They, you're t referring to a narration about pages that were eaten. That yes. doesn't mean that the Quran was lost. Oh, so it's if, revealed from the angel Gabriel to the Prophet, peace be upon him. It's preserved oh. on the preserved tablet. And it's been preserved with, uh, on earth okay. through... The, uh, I understand. So this is not the real Quran. There is a real Quran you're referring no, you're to that is preserved on a tablet. No, it is the real Quran. This is the real Quran, yes. but it's missing certain verses. Certain ayat, arman su'ukh, meaning they're be, they've been abrogated. No, they, or they've, they've been, been abrogated. eaten by sheep and goat. Yes or no? You're talking about written. If a she, if I write a verse of the Quran on here and yeah. then this page is burned, that doesn't mean that the Quran has been burned. Okay. So where is the, the verse that of the breastfeeding and the stoning that was eaten by the, the goat and the sheep? And you're saying it, it doesn't change the Quran. There's Show a, me. There is a extensive scholarly discussion Show me on the verse. that verse. Show me the verse. The verse has been uh, abrogated. It, it wasn't ab it was eaten by a goat. But God, God made. He's think. He says God made the goat eat it. So yeah. no, no, he didn't say that. You know. No. Uh, in the Quran, Allah says that He can, He uh, can make you forget in, in Surat uh, Surat Al Ada. Okay. Yeah. What Allah wills that you forget, you'll forget. Okay, forget what? Very if there are certain verses or there, this is the Prophet, peace be upon him, who has brought answer the religion. Me. Answer me, and yes then or no? At the end of his message, at the end of no, the no. career of We're the Prophet, peace be upon him, he said that I've completed your religion. No, it's not complete. Not complete. <laughs> you said modernity has like a problem. This is so far beyond like the uh, no. 
realm of mainstream Muslims, no, 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 the no, no, kind no. of points that you're making. I'm not there's making no any point. Agrees, I'm asking you a there's question. There's no one who agrees with the kinds of I'm arguments you that question. you're presenting. I'm not arguing. I'm I asking answered you your question. question. You're not answering. You said, did a goat eat it? I said, did yes, a goat a, eat it? A page, yes, can be eaten. Can we, What's the can point? Do it a oh bit no, this problem. is normal. We're this chatting. is normal. This is chatting. Okay. Right. Did a goat eat the verse of the Quran? Yes or no? A page that a verse was written on was two, eaten. two verses. A verse can be mansukh, it can be abrogated. Okay, where, where they eaten? That yes does or not no? mean that the book that we have has been corrupted. Okay, did the goat eat it? Yes or no? I said yes. Okay, yes. The, 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 the page. The Step page. one is finished. No, Step two. Is, no. Did God that, that bring is, those verses back into the intervene? Quran? Yeah. Mean, like, okay, this is silly. So, yeah, okay. So I think I, his point is that if it was eaten, it wasn't supposed to be part of the Quran to begin with. Is that is that what you say? God revealed the verse and then it was eaten because it wasn't supposed to be part of the Quran to begin with? Are you saying are you saying that God cannot have a certain revelation at one point of time and, and a different revelation that's been modified at a later point in God time? God can. In the Quran, can? Okay, not, then what's not the in the stomach of a goat and a sheep. But you no, think what's the problem okay. with it? The problem is that a, if, if a verse the Quran being is respected, abrogated, you're acknowledging right. that God has the prerogative to change don't what He you commands. See, don't you see how foolish this sounds to the real world? I mean, no. come on. There's a verse here about stoning the infidel, but it doesn't exist so, because a goat ate it. So no, no, one so bring this back to no one says that. That's just your word. That, no one's, it happened. No one says that. The Prophet's wife says it. That doesn't mean that. The prophet's wife. Can we bring this back to the? the here's yeah, let's, a, let's here's, go back. This here's, is something that. Well, here's how I will tie this to the discussion that we have about modernity, because the problem that this, like the, it seems like these books, uh, didn't come with a good manual, right? It's if the Quran is the guide and the Hadith is the manual, it doesn't seem like there is any two Muslims that could agree on, you know. I mean, I've seen better guide written about. If I, if I, for example, if this, if this place catch fire, right, and if I'm trying to get out and I go see the instructions on the wall and where the exit is, and it's a poetry, and I have to have a, a go get a scholarship to be able to de decode the poet to be able to not burn and get out, it just seems like some people will get out, some people won't. Um, some people need to spend 10 years to decode it to, just to be able to not burn. And, and given that this book is supposed to be a guide for us to save both this life and the other one, it just doesn't seem like it was uh, communicated in a way that could be easily understood or easily okay. followed. To, and basically, like these discussions kind of show how flawed these kind of texts are. Like, as a, even if it was, if even if it did have a good advice, it seems to be like, a uh, hidden layer of, uh, uh, you know, enigma and that's, that's puzzles. That's the case. The Islam is a lived tradition. It's something where um, you, it's not just Muslims. You're an infidel. Uh, in, I can't drink from your cup. <laughs> Muslims uh, engage in a detailed study of the Quran and the Hadith. And then based on a scholarly level of knowledge, they can then operationalize that and live their lives. That's not the case. That it's not academic in that sense. Muslims are living their lives through a shared tradition that has been passed down from generation to generation to generation. And those shared forms of life are in line with Islamic teachings and no, the normativity no, of not. Islam. The fact that there is disagreements amongst Muslims doesn't mean that the uh, a revelation is incoherent or that it doesn't have that kind of relevance and impact and guidance for the people who are practicing it or for humanity at large. If that was our standard for, for judging um, whether something was valid or invalid, then there would be no uh, any point of knowledge that we would consider valid because there's always disagreement and conflict. I mean, I, I mean, I, when I was setting up my TV, there was a manual for it and it seemed pretty direct and obvious I just like the Quran. Yeah, I mean if you want if you think life is just about a consumerist like setting up an IKEA drawer and that's like the no, limit of your conception IKEA's of what not, life is IKEA's, then IKEA's, yeah I agree an instruction manual that was would a be bad one. IKEA <laughs> manuals are not a good example they're, okay they're, TV they're, like flat screen <laughs> if like you think that the that human bad, experience yeah. is just a consumerist mechanistic operation right. then yeah I agree that a manual would be no, ideal okay, but even, even, that's even not legal document legal document like, I think in the modern world, when you look you at... You think there's no discussion on the law? You don't I think just, there's any conflict, there disagreement, be, bitter? There is, but much less vagueness I, than these things. I, but let me ask, let me I'm ask you I'm very surprised by you, Armin. Okay. You're learning some serious points 
just go right past you. Well, I mean, we will be here for 12 hours yeah, if I don't ask them you now. Something. Part of the discussion. Do you want it? But the thing is that if it goes too off much off of modernity, then no, we'll go all of our. All we over haven't gone off from the topic at all. Okay, bring we, us. The topic was Does Islam pose a challenge or threat to modernity, correct? Right. The brother has a problem with modernity. Mm -hmm. I have a problem to a certain extent with modernity. For example, this whole uh, he, she, they, them uh, change. I don't believe in this. And the new trans, pronouns trans, and okay. no, I believe they have the right to identify whatever they like. But the idea that new laws are being formed to tell me how to refer to other people and the new toilets and gender neutral this this talk doesn't sit well uh, with with the way I think. I'm sorry, you know, You're I respect them. <laughs> yeah, they're Islamophobes because this is how I think. No. You, well, these are the same kinds of changes that have been introduced to the Muslim exactly, world. Exactly, exactly. No uh, problem. Same-sex marriage. No uh, problem. All of these yes. things are being introduced. Yes, I agree. I agree. So I disagree with modernity to a certain extent when it becomes foolish. Like women should not uh, change the, the, the nappies and the diapers of their children without telling the baby, uh, seeking permission from the child, like what happened in Australian media. L let's put that aside. The question is, if you have a problem with the whole of modernity, I know you don't have a problem with technology to basic what we mean. You came by a plan of what you said earlier. What, what is the solution? You're saying Islam is the solution, correct? You craft it in a way as though the Muslim world is, is living in heaven right now. Do you not see the problems with the religion? Do, do you not see there's it's no not problem, a problem with the religion, it's with a the problem people with itself? The implementation. With the implementation and of the implementation religion. and intervention and sabotage and by imperial powers, colonial uh, powers. I These agree. Are, yes, it's so it's a dual problem. The main problem is imperial intervention and uh, influence and violence. That's the main problem. Can you give then, me an example? Muslims who themselves do not implement on, what Islam teaches. Hold that's also a so, problem. Not to the extent of. Okay the kind of destruction that's been okay. wrought by the viewers, colonialism. The viewers, according to myself, need you to clarify maybe just this one point. So you're saying most of the problems come from intervention, correct? So do you believe the sponsoring of ISIS by the American, f f former American administration was wrong? Who sponsored ISIS? The funding them. The f Obama said we funded the rebels in uh, ISIS. Uh, okay. Or, or Al Qaeda against the Soviet Union. Do you think that's wrong? Yeah, I think that's foreign intervention. That's in, that's uh, militarizing a portion of the Muslim population to fight Western conflicts. Yeah, that's. Uh, I have a problem with that kind of intervention. Oh, so and that kind of proxy wars that have uh, been created. Okay. Yeah. So, so <laughs> the ideology of ISIS that was already there, butchering, killing people. You don't have a problem with. You have a problem when the West intervenes and funds that. No, no. ISIS is a product of the conflict and no, war not. and destruction. No, it's not. That ISIS is a product over of a million Bukhari people, over a million and people killed and, and destroyed, birth defects nope. caused by nope. dirty bombs used nope. in Iraq. No, nope. no, nope. all of Incorrect. this pain and suffering. Nope. Yeah, ISIS didn't ISIS, exist. ISIS, ISIS did existed. not exist. ISIS did not ISIS exist is before Khalid the Iraq Ali. War. Before Can the we ISIS, talk over each other? ISIS is the is the the very inheritance and the the revival of the very caliphates that took place in the early years of Islam. Islam. That's exactly it. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq beheaded Malik ibn, Malik ibn Nuwayra and put his head in a pot and cooked it and ate it and then raped his wife in the same night. Yes, he, but These are all fabrications. It's not, what if I prove them to you? What if I prove them to you? Yeah, where's the narration well, from what Bukhari? If I prove them? One second, I will prove them. No, not Please. only from Bukhari, from 10 sources right now, I'll bring them to you. Yeah. Hold on one second. Okay. Wait one second. Can I ask you a question while you're bringing it up? Ask him while I bring out the references. All right, so because I have, I have a lot of questions for him on Twitter, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to get a word in. Um, so given that, you know, Muhammad, this is a question I had earlier. Muhammad had satanic verses, right? The devil could speak to him. Uh, and he could confuse it with God, right? That was a very specific incident. I know, but how could it doesn't you... like it doesn't threaten all of Islamic theology? How would you know the rest of it is not from the devil? Because it, there was confirmed within the life of the Prophet peace be upon him. Like we have an epistemology that takes the words of the Prophet 
as the truth that he is speaking for God. And so when he says something that this has not uh, happened outside of this specific incident, um, and, and that incident was corrected, the Prophet, peace be upon him, is corrected within the Quran. But God, I, God will correct uh, certain things that the Prophet, peace be upon him, All of that could be, said. all of that, the correction, all of like that Surah could Abasa. be... Abasa. Abasa all, is a good example. I understand, but if Muhammad could mistake the devil with the words, the words from the devil and the word of God with each other, then all of that correction... All of that discussion, all of that, um, you know, oh, that was even the even somebody even hearing that, oh, that was from the devil. Ignore that. These are actually word of God. That could also be from the devil. If it could be checked once, why not all the time? So uh, the, the entirety of the religion is consistent and self-consistent. And this is what the scholars discuss uh, in detail in the uh, Islamic intellectual history. Right. So if there's something that is odd or something that is strange, it's something that you won't find something like that. Everything is confirmed within yeah. itself to form a consistent whole. So you might refer to certain verses uh, and we can talk to, yeah. talk about them in you detail. We can talk think, about you, uh, wife beating, we can wait. talk about uh, concubines, we can talk about aggressive expansionist warfare. These are all subjects that I want to discuss. I want to discuss these in detail because I want to give you the subjects to discuss. It's now. necessary. No, to, no, we need to take. A it's necessary to understand where these practices form within the pre-modern right. uh, world structure and how they were, in fact, moral and justifiable, and in some cases, the only possible avenue to live your life uh, within the pre-modern context. Right. And so, if you take the situation that we have today and with technology that we have today and try to judge other societies based on our particular technological uh, nation state context, then there are certain things that are not going to make okay. sense unless you understand the full context. And yes. that's the kind of thing that I, I'd love to discuss. Hey everyone, we're planning on making a lot more videos. We're going to have unboxing Islam, unboxing Judaism, unboxing Christianity, unboxing communism, unboxing the alt-right, the alt-left. If you guys want to support us and make help us make more of these videos, please go to patreon.com forward slash ideas unboxed and become a patron we have so many interesting projects coming up we want to have a lot of live discussions with our patrons about some of the interesting things that happened and uh, some of the you know behind the scene uh, discussions that we had we with our team and you know want to get the patrons involved in the process so if you if you do become a patron, we I'll make sure that we'll schedule uh, live meetings uh, with each other on YouTube where we could come hang out and we could have discussions about the previous projects and the upcoming projects.